engineer will think I'm a quitter if I stop now. See? Keep your eyes on the road. Phyllis, here I can't. Be 20 more hours, darling. May I say I hope so, sir? May I say I doubt if there will ever be a wedding? Now, what could be better our marriage this time? What prevented it five other times? Fires, murders, explosions, everything short of an earthquake. This time, Auntie. I'm not your aunt, you drummer. <laughs> We made it. Something seems to whisper, my love. That was only the beginning. Of our happy married life. Or of a trip to the hospital. Pardon me, my good man, but uh, would you be good enough to tell me the way to, uh, to, uh... Oh, dear, I've forgotten where I want to go. This is Rockingham, sir. Rockingham? Oh, yes, quite so. Yeah. Rockingham Tower, the residence of Captain Drummond. Go right up the old Roman road. All you have to do is follow the furniture vans. Follow the furniture vans? Now, why now should I want to follow furniture vans? Well, you see, Captain Drummond's always lived at the lodge. But he's getting married tomorrow, so they're opening the towers. First time in 20 years, sir. Oh, I see. Oh, yes, yes, quite so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. We're all the warm for the time of the year, don't you think? Hey, it's warm, all right, but it's August, you know. August? My calendar said January. <laughs> I must have forgotten the turn it. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, up the Roman road, follow the furniture, man. It's Captain Drummond. Right? Tenny? Thank you, Miss. Uh, Miss Anderson, uh, Captain Drummond. Oh, Tenny, I'll put these in water if I may. Oh, things are in the car, Tennyson. I'll see to them, Miss. Your rooms are in the east wing. The towel will be ready by dinner time, sir. Good, Tenny. And tomorrow? Uh, I've made all arrangements, sir. Rehearsal at 11 and the wedding at 12. And it's the last chance you'll have if I have anything to say about it, Hugh Drummond. Do you hear that, Tenny? No nonsense. This time we've got to get married. As they say in America, sir, this time it is in the bag. I don't like American slang, Tennyson. Shall I show you to your rooms, Miss? Bosh. Spent half my time here when I was a girl. Coming, Phyllis? Presently, Aunt Blanche. I'm afraid Auntie doesn't like us. But I do. <laughs> that will be Mr. Longworth, sir. <laughs> yes, making himself useful again. I'm afraid so, sir. Out yourself? <laughs> I don't know, old boy. <laughs> the way you saved that vase is remarkable. <laughs> Quite acrobatic, what? Yes, you know, Hello, 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 boy. The sparkle in those eyes can mean only one thing. <laughs> Happiness. <laughs> Scotland Yard waits while I attend your wedding. Thank you, Colonel. By the way, did I hear a crash? Oh, yeah. All the way from the top shelf, old boy, I never broke it. It's lucky for you, Algie. That's a genuine Ming worth 200 pounds. 200 pounds? <whistles> I'd better put it right on. <laughs> It uh, was worth 200 pounds, old boy. This way, Mr. Bolton. Mr. Tennyson should be somewhere about. Mr. Tennyson? He's in charge of the staff. I thought the butler was usually in charge. <laughs> Captain Drummond's gentleman's gentleman. He's the one you have to keep your eye on at Rockingham. Why, he's even discharged the new cook. Oh, that came only this morning. Because she didn't agree with him about the Yorkshire pudding. He's the whole cheese, I can tell you. Quite so, Mrs. Tollers. The cheese, the whole cheese. Oh, I'm sure, sir, I didn't mean that. Quite so. Uh, you'll see that those roses are put in Miss Clavering's room? Yes. Your boat and the new butler? Uh, Shastra's agency sent me down, Mr. Tennyson. Uh, there have been some nice families. Oh, yes, sir, the very best. Yes, you'll begin your duties at once. Mrs. Thomas will show you to your quarters. Thank you. Yes, sir. Of Roger Bacon. How frightfully interesting. Wonder what edition it is. Oh. Excuse us, sir. Oh, that's quite all right. Go, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Wait. Pardon me, but, uh, is there something you want, sir? 
Oh, no, 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 nothing at all, no. no. Oh, <laughs> is that my tea? Hmm. Uh, well, uh, just uh, put it somewhere, somewhere. Pardon me, sir, but this is Captain Drummond's tea. Oh, Captain Drummond, yes. Oh, uh, I asked him to come and see me, yes. Uh, uh, show him in, show him in. Oh, pardon me, sir, but Captain Drummond is in. Oh, oh, oh uh, Stuart, I came to see him, didn't I? Uh, uh, well, just a moment, please. Ah. Oh. Would you be so good as to tell him I'm here? Very good, sir. Uh, you'll uh, wait here, sir? Oh, yes, yes, you, yes, 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 I'll wait here. Yeah. Uh, come in. That's odd. I, I distinctly heard a knock. These things have no fixed value, only one a collector's willing to pay for them. Splendid. Welcome. Oh, Gentlemen to see you, sir. Oh. Professor Downey, Research Department, Museum of Historical Documents. Downey? What's he doing here? Well, do you know him, Colonel? Well, I've met him. In Scotland Yard? You know, Hugh, just because I happen to associate with you and your friends does not necessarily mean that all my acquaintances are rascals. I like that. <laughs> I'd see him if I were you, Hugh. He's a quaint old bird. Knows more English history than any man I've ever heard of. Oh, so I meant, Annie. Very good, sir. Yeah. Good as new, almost. That makes me feel much better. Oh, I'm so glad of that. Just let it dry for a few hours, will you? I'll put it where it will be safe. Be careful, Alsie. <laughs> Not twice, you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you break something? Well, Professor Downey, I'm Hugh Drummond. You're just in time for tea. Oh, I just had some tea out there. Oh, I see you've got some more here. How huh? jolly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alsie Longworth. Longworth? Anglo-Norman name, 11th century. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Won't you come and meet my friends, Professor? Oh, oh I'd be delighted. <laughs> Phyllis, may I present Professor Downey, Miss Clavering. <laughs> Charmed. And uh, Colonel Nielsen of Scotland Yard. How are you? Oh, a uh, fellow Scot. <laughs> and what part might I ask of Scotland? Excuse me. No, 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 Professor, you misunderstand. Colonel Nielsen is Commissioner of Scotland Yard. Oh, yes, I, I wrote a history about it once. Uh, uh, rather overrated, I fear. Scotland Yard? Oh, no, no, my book. <laughs> tea, Professor? <laughs> oh, thanks. Nothing like a good cup of hot tea on a cold January day. <laughs> Oh, uh, perhaps I should explain the reason of my visit. It's about the treasure. Treasure? What treasure? I estimate the value to be in the neighborhood of one million pounds. Of course, in the days of Charles I, the value of the pound wasn't... What on earth are you talking about, Professor? Ah, i better explain. Yes, yes, I will explain. You've heard of uh, Bori Ishliani? No, I can't say that I have. Well, he was my assistant in the museum until I had him arrested three years ago. Arrested? What for? For theft, sir. Theft of these. At least I should say it can't be theft since I've still got them. He was a scoundrel, sir. A same clever thinking scoundrel, sir, who masqueraded under the name of Seaton. Henry Seaton. Stop it, Hugh, before something happens. Well, not a chance, darling. Professor, may I ask what those papers are? Oh, 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 these are the plans of the ancient rooms and passages below Rocky and Tower. What, my own place? Yes. And this... This is the diary of Colonel John Cooper, a royalist officer under Charles I. One of my ancestors, darling, there's a portrait of him in the long gallery. Uh, yes, we have a copy in the museum. Look rather a blackguard, a, a bit like you, uh, uh, Captain Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> me, did, did I say something amusing? Not at all, Professor. Please go on. Uh, let me see, where was I? Oh, yes, I was puzzled as to why Seaton should want to steal these particular papers. So I made a study of them, together with all contemporary documents I had in my possession. And I came to the conclusion that there is a treasure, King's treasure, hidden somewhere. Here, perhaps, under our very feet. Do you hear that, darling? Right here in Rockingham. I might have known it. Uh, and now, uh, this is uh, what uh, Colonel Cooper says in his diary. Riding all day and all night, got safely to rock him with the king's treasure. Do you hear that, darling? I heard. My wound very painful. Conceal all the treasure in the passages without arousing suspicion of the servants. Dead will remain until my royal master hath need of it. Those are the passages, Captain Drummond, according to the plans. 
Rocky was positively honeycombed. Why, I was through them scores of times when a boy. Then you saw the crypt, the tower, the waters, the chamber of the spikes. The what? The tower, the water, the chamber of spikes. No, no, darling. No, they are new to me, sir. Then you haven't seen the places mentioned in this diary. Perhaps I didn't see them all. My father had the entrance to those passages walled up. Uh, where was the entrance? In one of the storerooms, I believe. Why, the one directly below this, as a matter of fact. Obviously, there's another set of passages. The diary describes them minutely. And where's the entrance to those passages, Professor? <laughs> Unfortunately, Colonel, I cannot tell you yet. Good. You see, this diary makes use of a device very common at the time, a secret cipher, so that it conceals the exact location. Observe. And there it will remain until my royal master hath need of it. U-R-E-Z-Q-S-L-T-I-S. -S. Sounds like Greek to me. Oh, no, no, my dear sir. If it were Greek, there'd be no difficulty. Well, it's, it's all very exciting, Professor, but I'm afraid it's not going to make us much richer. How's that, darling? <laughs> my dear sir, you are wrong. I have already made progress in reading the cipher. You have? Mm -hmm. But I am hampered as to exact data concerning the tower itself. Now, I thought perhaps if I might see it. <clears throat> Professor, I'm to be married tomorrow. And the treasure that becomes mine then is all that interests me. Bravo, darling. <laughs> That's a very pretty speech. But I should be glad to have you as my guest for as long as you may require to carry out your researches. Oh, my dear Captain Drummond, you make me very happy. What a wonderful adventure this is going to be. That's what I'm afraid of. Professor Downey asked me to give you this, sir. Uh, he said he thought you might like to read it tonight. Cooper's diary, eh? Very thoughtful of him. Made him comfortable, Tony? In the North Wing, sir. He's engrossed in studying the cipher. Well, you might put it beside my bed. Very good, sir. <clears throat> your elaborate indifference doesn't fool me a bit, Hugh Drummond. I know you're positively aching to tear rocking into pieces, stone by stone. But darling, a million pounds. Hugh, please, won't you tell it? <laughs> I am. On my record, darling, you're justified in expecting battle, murder, and sudden death. If anything should happen well, now. Not this time, sweet. We'll be married tomorrow at the stroke of 12. What's prevented it five other times? Fires, murders, explosions, everything short of an earthquake. Get married tomorrow. Where's the clergyman, Elsie? He'll be a long old boy. Don't get nervous. I thought everything was arranged. Don't worry, darling. It is. <laughs> Cut it out, big boy. Don't tell me married life is going to spoil your sense of humor. <laughs> I bet you forgot the ring. Uh, quit with your arsenic, I haven't. <laughs> you, you, you really want to marry me, don't you? Can you imagine my not wanting to marry you? Below you is the Thames River, and I will. Penny! Yes, sir. Mason, 
going to blow up any minute. You don't believe I have a chance. Tammy. Tammy! Are you trying to give satisfaction to me? Louder, Tammy, louder! Tony, what happened? We, we, we appear to have had a slight touch of nightmare, sir. Uh, it was no nightmare that hit me on the chin. Then it, it wasn't you who hit me, sir? Hey, open the door. Have you two been fighting? Fighting? Oh, no, sir. You? No, no, darling, there's nothing to worry about. I warned you if we came down here, something would happen. What was it? Probably a second story man, Colonel, who thought Rockingham was still unoccupied. We rather got the worst of it, eh, Tenny? It could hardly be called a holiday, sir. Let's go after the blackers, old boy. No, there was only one, Algy, only one. Only one? You mean you let one man knock you both down and then get away? Oh, dear, 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 you're slipping, old thing. You too, Tenny. And we are humiliated, sir. Phyllis, you mark my words. He'll wriggle out of this wedding just as he did all the others. Well, that's hardly fair, Aunt Blanche. I was just reading Colonel Cooper's diary. It's gone. And so am I. Good night. Colonel, somebody beside Donnie thinks there's treasure hidden in Rockingham. You didn't see his face? I couldn't see anything because of that pillow. Afterwards, we smashed the lamp and it was too dark. Hugh. You, you really want to marry me, don't you? No. Can you imagine my not wanting to marry you? Then let's leave here now. We can be in London in an hour and... All right, darling, we'll do that very thing. Captain Drummond's room? Yes, Professor Downey. He wants to speak to you, says it's urgent. Don't talk to him, Hugh. He's my house guest, darling, I must. All right. There, there, old girl, it's quite all right. Nothing's going to happen. Yes, Professor. <laughs> yes, I know it's midnight. He's six minutes late. You have? He solved the cipher. Go on, Professor. 
Are you certain? Yes, yes, yes. I can lead you directly to the hiding place. Henry Seaton. Hello. Hello. Are you there? So you know where the treasure is, Professor Downey? Yes, Henry. Now I know why you tried to steal the Cooper diary. You saved me a lot of work. Line's dead. I knew it. Tenny! I had them here, Dom. I give up. Now, darling. I know it's not your fault. The fates are against us. It'd be the same if we went to Timbuktu to get married. But, sweetheart... As long as that's the way it is. Tenny, give me a pistol. Darling, you're one in a thousand. Last time, I was one in a million. Professor! Professor Downey! I say, old boy, uh, let me, will you? Hello! Are you there? Are you there? I have it here, sir. Ah. Stand back now. Maybe I'll just try it, Hugh. Uh, yes, I'll show you how, old boy. Hold this, will you? Um, now, darling, no nerves, old girl, no nerves. In heaven's name, you Drummond, couldn't you wait until morning? Well, what is it, sir? That's what we're trying to find out, Paul. Yes. Pardon me, sir. <laughs> and if you'll pardon me, sir. Do you really intend to marry this, this lunatic? I'm doing my best. Heaven protect your children. Well, then the first girl after you, Auntie. Marsh. Well, 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 hurry up. I'm going to get back to sleep. Pardon me. Never mind, Tenny. I follow you, sir. <coughs> Hello. Rocky Hill Police Station. This is Colonel Nielsen of Scotland Yard. A man has been killed at Rockingham to... No, 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 wait a minute. Not, not the lodge, Rockingham Tower. Notify the coroner and send a detail of police over here to patrol the grounds. Yes, have them report to me personally. I'll explain when they arrive. Colonel. Uh, uh, hold the line, wait a minute. What is it, Archie? I've been thinking. What about? Uh, nothing. I'm not surprised. I've checked the windows and doors in this wing, Mr. Tennyson. And the billiard room? Everything is secure, sir. You can start on the second floor. Very good, sir. I say thank you. How's Anne Blanche? You gave her a sleeping tablet. Good, just what she needed. <laughs> Colonel, Downey mentioned someone by the name of Seaton, didn't he? Hugh, yeah, this is interesting. Ishiani, or Seaton, was released from prison yesterday. I just got that from the yard as you came in. Then he's the man who murdered the professor. And tried to do me in. And stole Cooper's diary from your room. And Downey's key to the cipher. Which means that Seaton will try to get into Rockingham again. And that is why I had Tenny and Bolton lock all the doors and windows, my dear Sherlock Holmes. And that is why I ordered a detail of police to patrol the grounds, my dear Watson. If you had an ounce of brains, you'd leave the doors and windows open. And let the fellow walk off with a million pounds? And if I remember my Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson managed to get married. Which is more than you'll ever do, Hugh Drummond, as long as you keep fooling around with treasure trove and that villainous diary. Sit down, Auntie. Oh, I don't want to sit down. But, Auntie, we haven't got the diary. I beg your pardon, sir. I found it under the window of Professor Downey's room. Good, Tenny. See, Phyllis? Deception. Collusion. Hugh, I'm afraid. That book brought death to Professor Downey. Please get rid of it, won't you? All right, darling, I will. Now, Tenny? Uh, yes, Captain Drew. The diary. A match? A newspaper? Yes, Captain Drew. The Times. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Times, sir. And a fireplace. I follow you, sir. You're quite certain, sir? Fire, Tenny. Flames. As you say, sir. You see? 
Maybe I was mistaken, Hugh. You're a nice boy. Come now, dear, we can sleep. I say, old boy, did she kiss you? Did she, Elsie? I, uh, I saw her. Maybe she did, Elsie. Maybe she did. Well, there goes a million pounds. That's love, old boy. Real love. Well, maybe it is, Elsie, but somehow I... Well, I feel like a quitter. I beg your pardon, son. But if you feel any pangs of regret about burning the diary, I took the precaution to burn the uh, telephone directory, so... Just in case. Tenny, you're magnificent. I try to give satisfaction, sir. You're a veritable treasure, sir. Treasure indeed, Tenny. And with this, we'll find it, eh? As they say in America, though, one can't be shot for trying. You're wrong, Tenny. Professor Donnie was. Well, anything doing? Nothing irregular. Nothing but me losing a good night's sleep. I wish they see Henry Seaton and Halifax, I do. Yeah, cooperating with Scotland Yard to catch Henry Seaton might win you a promotion, my boy. Aye, or a bullet in the back. Yeah, talk hearty now, talk hearty. Hearty? Hearty me I. Go on, carry on. transposed, we'd have... we'd have N. Alsie, wake up! <laughs> Come on, old boy, you promised to help. No, no, don't, darling, don't. What? Oh, it's you, huh? Oh, then she didn't slap me. Who didn't? The girl on the bus. We were riding down Piccadilly, and just as I kissed her, you slapped me. I'm sorry, old boy. Oh, that's all right. I'll probably see her again sometime. Now, look, Alfie, I, I've got the... Hugh, I forgot to ask for a telephone number. Look, Alfie, I've got it. The first letter, it's N, I think. First letter in what? In the alphabet, Alfie, the letter N. N in the alphabet. <laughs> That's funny. Shut up. Now, here, look at that. Z, Y, X, W, B, U. Yeah, it's a reversed alphabet directly above a normal A, B, C one. All right, Hill. A is Z, and B is Y. Right. Now, when I read you a letter, you write down the one directly above it in the reversed alphabet. Uh, I get it, uh, I think. Yeah. X. X. C. L. Uh, o. L. Go on. X. C. L. O. L. O. Now, that's the first word. What does it spell? Cuckoo. Cuckoo? Doesn't make sense, does it? Well, that depends on the point of view, Alfie. <laughs> oh, confound it if we only have Professor Donnie's notes. Y. I. R. Z. A. I. R. Y. D. R. I. O. L. Great help you turned out to be. Mm -hmm. Three clubs. I'd give anything for just one. Doubled. It's Lodge and Rockingham in line, a stone is found. Full three long paces north, and in the ground the answer lies. But should you hear the sound of turning wheels, beware. Y-R-A-R-B-I-L. L-I-B-R-A-R-R-Y. Library. The library.
help my mate, sir. You see who it was? No, sir. Let's get him inside. Kenny! Kenny, now. Confound it. What's the matter with the lights? The fuse must have blown off. It's all right now, son. Oh, it's you, Colonel. He's done for, sir. You? What is it? It's one of the constables, dear. <laughs> I beg your pardon, miss. Over here, Bolton. Yes, Mr. Tennyson. You'd better go to your room, darling. Yes, sir, and keep Aunt Blanche in hers. She must have slept right through it. Well, that's something to be thankful for. Alf had a feeling that Seaton would get him, sir. Any instructions? Yes, locate your men at station close around the house. Very good, sir. Poor fellow. It might have been you if Seaton had got inside. But, but he was inside. We saw him. You saw him? Where? In this very room, Colonel. Yeah, he must have hidden somewhere after he killed Downey. That explains why the lights went off and why the burglar alarm sounded when he went out. Confound it, Alf, if you hadn't made such a racket. Oh, I'm sorry, old boy. I was only trying to help. I know, I know. Well, besides, Seaton won't try and get inside again tonight. How do we know he isn't in now? We saw him go through those doors. He had plenty of time to come back while we were outside, Alty. Oh, you. Huh? You mean he may be hiding in one of those secret passages, waiting to pop out and corpse one of us? Oh, it's not unlikely. He has done his key to the south, you know. And we don't know where those passages are. Not the ones Donny mentioned in the Kenny, Bolton. Kenny, sir. We're going over this house from cellar to attic. But darling, you better go to your room and lock yourself in and stay there. Uh, Bolton, see Miss Clavering to her room and stay on guard in the hall. Very good, sir. But Hugh, I... Please do as I say, darling. All right. Elsie. Elsie, you take this floor and I'll do the cellar. Tenny, you take the upper floors. Oh, what am I to do, Hugh? Colonel, you stay here. If Seaton comes back... I'll mow him down. All right, Hugh, I'll carry on. Bulldog Drum and Sacred Police. Could have gone that way. I don't think so, sir. He would have had to pass one of my men I had stationed at the front gate. And he, he didn't take the path toward the lodge? No, sir, because that's where I was on duty when it happened. He could have gone through the flower beds and escaped through the woods. Not unless he had seven league boots, Colonel. That bed's over 20 feet wide. There's another footprint on it. And had he gone that way... He would have met us. Which he did not. And we can't let him get away with this, Colonel. He's made a fair job of it so far. May I get up now, sir? Um, oh, yes, Tony, thank you. Oh. Well, that gives us a pretty fair idea of what took place here last night. Except how he got away. Uh, yes, Alzi, except how he got away. And if he didn't go that way, and if he didn't go that way... Or that way? Then which way did he go? Up, sir. Up? Yes, Alzi, up. The ivy! Huh? Look, Colonel, he's left a trail of broken ivy as plain as day. Now will you believe he's somewhere in the house? In the passages, Colonel. And when we open the entrance to the ones I'm familiar with... We'll, we'll... try to find the entrance to the ones he's familiar with. Right. Have you ordered the men from the village, Tenny? They started to open the wall in the storeroom an hour ago, sir. Good. Now we'll see if Seaton went through the window or made it to the roof. Oh, careful, Hill. All right. See you in the third floor, sir. Right, Tenny? Wedding festivities, indeed. This place is a museum of horrors. Not just one murder, but two. Two murders in one night. There, there, Auntie. It's all over now. What's that? What is it? Help! Help! <coughs> Sorry, darling. I thought you were downstairs having breakfast. Hugh Drummond, what are you doing? Peering in my window. Now, perhaps you realize the kind of man you're marrying? Please, Aunt Blanche, let me explain. I'm following Seaton. Yes, climbing up walls like a bat. Well, that's how he got away, up the ivy to one of the rooms above this, I think. I'm through. I've had enough. I'm taking the next train back to town, and so are you. But, Auntie, we're going to be married at noon. Well, I could be done to death 20 times before then. Oh, Aunt Blanche. I'm not your aunt. I wouldn't be your aunt if an act of Parliament decreed it. Yes, but you're Phyllis's aunt, and you can't desert her like this. Oh, can't I? I suppose you will stop me, you... You... You fine climbing Dracula. You better go. I'll talk to her. No, not that way. Down. Anything for you, darling? Phew! Don't worry, 
darling. That's much easiest way to come down. Captain Drummond. Yes, Denny? There's no trace of him in this room, sir. Well, try the next one, then. That'll be Bolton's room, sir. Well, go over and see if the vines are torn over there on the right. Very good, sir. Bolton! 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 Teddy! Teddy! That's odd he doesn't answer. Now let's go up. Captain Drummond! What is it, Sergeant? Foul play, sir. One of my men found a body in clear wood. What, another one? Yes, sir. And we're hoping that you can identify him. What makes you think that? Because, sir, he was coming here. Here? Open season at Rockingham. The station master identified him as a passenger on the 215 yesterday. He asked the way to the tower, sir. What did he look like? Well, sir, he, uh... He was a... He was a man about 40. Of medium height. Said he was your new butler, sir. Bolton. I've got it. Bolton started for Rockingham. And it was Seaton who arrived. Right. He must have met Bolton on the train and... I say, Hugh, what's happened to Tenny? Tenny! We're wasting time. Sergeant, let no one leave the house. Right, sir. Get my hot water bottle, Phyllis? Bolton, what are you doing in my room? Oh! Tenny! Tenny! Oh, he doesn't seem to be in, in the wardrobe belt. Where is everyone, Bolton? In the garden, I believe, Miss Clavering. Captain Drummond is examining the ivy. Oh, thank you. Captain Drummond. Oh, take it easy, old boy. What happened? Uh, what did you see? Stars. <laughs> Auntie. Oh. Auntie. It was Bolton, sir. Yes, we know, Teddy, we know. Hugh. Hugh, where are you? Hugh. What are you doing? Uh, Captain Drummond must have found the entrance to the passages, miss. But I thought the entrance Phyllis! was... Phyllis! Uh... Phyllis! 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 She must be with Seaton. But where? That's what we've got to find out, Algie. See if the men have opened the wall in the storeroom. Colonel, I'm sure that scream came from here. There must be an entrance somewhere. Blighters didn't half wall up the entrance to these here passages, they didn't. Wait a minute! I'm the old blighter that walled it up 20 years ago! Blimey, what's she doing? Making a bomb, young fellow, my lad. Bottle, fuse, and gunpowder. <laughs> It'll blow open the entrance to that passage in no time at all. Won't it damage the house, sir? Not a chance, or no. I learned all about this sort of thing during the war. Pardon me, sir. We are both needed in the library, sir. Right, ho, I'll toddle along. Oh, confound it, Colonel. These panels are like the rock of Gibraltar, all of them. This code isn't solving either. Well, what do you expect? It took Donnie three years to work it out. You can't do it in ten minutes. No, no, don't get the wind up, Hugh. But, Colonel, Phyllis... Algy, Teddy! Right here, old boy. Teddy, sir. Oh, good work, Teddy. Huh? I'll get busy, all of you. Yeah, but I said, you, I've never used one of these things. It's just like a corkscrew, Algy. Oh, oh, I know how to do that. I wouldn't 
try it if I were you. And these passages are like catacombs. May I ask what you propose to do with me? I don't know. You know, something I hadn't counted on. You know just how you're going to get out of here? Well, <laughs> the way we came in. I suppose it hasn't occurred to you they'll be waiting in the library. They know the entrance is there. Do they? We heard them. So they must have heard me when I screamed. Oh, you're a smart girl. I suppose. I've got it, sir. Good work, Teddy. Oh. Seems just like the others. What a draft here, Colonel. Hugh. Good work, Alty. Stand clear, Teddy. Alty. Huh? Will you please get out of the way? Oh. Should you hear the sound of turning wheels, beware. This place could tell some pretty tales, eh? Rockingham in line, a stone is found. Full three long paces north, and in the ground the answer lies.
like sardines in a tin. Birds in a cage would be more appropriate, sir. <laughs> We are in for a spot of trouble. Covering come down to us and we'll give you a fair chance to get away. Well, throw out your pistols. Oh, I say, well, we can't do that. I'll count five. One. Don't do it, Hugh. He'll kill you. Two. Here they come. Pardon me, sir. The reserve. Good work, Tenny. Come out, all of you. You must take me for a fool, Nielsen. I promise to let you go. I'll see to that. First, we'll have Captain Drum. No! Miss Clavering, places everyone, rehearsal. Right over here, please, uh, facing me. And, uh, Captain, you will be on Miss Clavering's right. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, just a little bit closer, if you please, yes. And, uh, Colonel, huh? you will be on Miss Clavering's left. Oh, splendid. And, uh, Mr. Longworth, you will write here on Captain Drummond's right. That's right, well, now, splendid. Now, uh, supposing we run through it. All you have to do is to keep calm. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, dearly beloved, we are gathered here. I say, Hugh, are you there? Oh. oh. Where's Phyllis? 
chin up, old boy. She's gone. Gone where? She and her aunt have departed for Africa, sir. Africa? Yes, to hunt lions. She said it would be safer. Sir. <laughs>